In this video, you're gonna learn how to do Gaussian elimination with back substitution. So this is just another technique for solving systems of equations. Instead of doing the graphing method or the elimination method or the substitution method, now we're using basically like a matrix method. And again, it's called Gaussian elimination with back substitution. We're gonna go through two examples. The first example, you can see we've got three equations, three variables. Our first step is to write it as an augmented matrix. So what is an augmented matrix? Well, essentially what an augmented matrix is, is you're just using the coefficients, okay, the numbers in front of the variables, and you're also adding on the solutions here in this, for this right column. So what, all I'm doing is I'm just writing down those coefficients, writing down the answers, okay, and you can see I'm separating with a little line or a dashed line, okay, like so. And the way that uh, Gaussian elimination works is that you can interchange any two rows, okay, you can multiply any row by a constant, as long as it's not zero, and you can add any two rows together. So let's see if I can show you how this works. Our first step is we're gonna to try to get zero in this lower left-hand corner. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna multiply the first row by negative one, and I'm gonna add it to the third row, and I'm gonna put the answer in the third row. Now I wanna warn you right from the very beginning, it's good to make a little note about what you're doing in case you make a mistake and you wanna go back and track you know, the steps that you did. It's very easy to do, there's a lot of just like little arithmetic errors that can happen, but uh, let me see if I can show you. So negative one, okay, plus one gives us zero. Negative two plus four is two. Uh, positive three plus negative two is one. And negative one plus nine is eight. Okay, the other two rows are staying the same. So I'm just gonna copy those down as they were, okay, and let's see. So now the next step is we wanna get zero in this position right here. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna multiply uh, negative two times row one, I'm gonna add that to row two, and I'm gonna put the answer in row two, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're gonna multiply negative two times one, which is negative two, plus two is zero. Negative four plus negative one is negative five. Six plus one is seven and negative two plus one is negative one. So you really have to be careful with that arithmetic because uh, if you make a little mistake, it's gonna <clears throat> throw the whole uh, system off. Okay, so now we've got zero in these two spots here. Our next step is to get zero right here, okay? And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna multiply the row two uh, by two, so two times row two, and then I'm gonna add it to five times row three, and I'm gonna put the answer in row three. Okay, so you're with me so far? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna say two times row two. Okay, so that's gonna be zero, and then this is gonna be, uh, let's see, uh, negative 10 plus positive 10, that's gonna give us a zero. Uh, okay, good, and then this is gonna give us 14 plus five is uh, 19, right? And then over here we've got negative two plus 40, which is 38, okay. Now the other rows, they don't change, they're staying the same, so I'm just gonna copy those down. It's a lot, of, um, a lot of writing, but the nice thing is you don't have to write the variables over and over again. So now you can see we've gotten zeros here in this lower left-hand corner. The next step is you wanna get ones on the diagonal, okay? So you're with me so far, you wanna get ones on this diagonal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply uh, 1 19th times row three I'm gonna put that answer in row three. I'm also gonna multiply uh, negative one-fifth times row two, and I'm gonna put the answer in row two. And then the first one is already starts with a one, so we're good there. So let me go ahead and uh, do that next step here. So that's gonna give us, let's see, what do we have here? We've got one, two, negative three, uh, one, okay? And we've also got zero, a one, and let's see, negative seven-fifths and we're multiplying by negative one-fifth, so this is one-fifth. And let's see, what else do we have? We've got zero, zero, one, and two. Okay, so now if you can see what we've got so far, this we're gonna rewrite these as equations now. So this is actually the top equation is one x plus two y minus three z equals one. The second equation is zero x plus one y minus seven five z, seven fifth z equals one fifth. And the last one is uh, one z is equal to two. So now here's where the back substitution comes in. You see this kind of stair step pattern. We've got one variable, one equation. You know, we've got the second equation's got two variables. The top equation's got three variables. So we're just gonna back substitute. So if I put two in for z, 
Okay, we already know what z is. We've got y minus 7 fifths times 2 equals 1 fifth. So that's going to be y minus 14 fifths equals 1 fifth. And if we add the 14 fifths to the other side, we get 15 fifths, which equals 3. Okay, so now we know what z and y are. We just have to solve for x. Let's go to the top equation. We've got x plus 2 times 3, because that's what y is, minus 3 times 2, that's what z is, equals 1. So we've got x plus 6 minus... Uh, 6 is equal to 1. The 6 and the negative 6 cancel, so you can see x equals 1. And if you want to write your final answer, you would write it as a triple. x is 1, y is 3, z is 2. That's your answer. And then you can check your answer if you want by taking you know, these values, x, y, and z, putting them into all three of the equations here, making sure that you know, they give us the appropriate solutions on the right. So again, this is you know, Gaussian elimination with back substitution. We're gonna go through another example to show you more how it works. But before I do that, if you're preparing for the ACT or the SAT, you know, check out my huge SAT math review video course and my huge ACT math review video course. They go through a, uh, a lot of different concepts. Uh, we have a teaching segment. There's opportunities to practice and do some problems. And it just gives you a good overall review and an insight into some of the key things that they want you to know when you're taking that test. So definitely check that out. I have a link below in the description. And also you can check out the links through my about page on my uh, YouTube channel, Mars Math Tutoring. But let's get into the next uh, example. Let me erase this board and I'll be right back at you. Okay, example number two, we've, you can see we've got a three by three, okay, three variables, three equations, and the first thing we wanna do is we're at our augmented matrix. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just using the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, right? And let's see, one, three, one, 18. We've got some larger numbers here, so we might have to take out the calculator to do some of these calculations, okay, to make it go a little bit quicker. But remember, our first step here is to get zero in this lower left hand corner. And the way we do that is we want to combine either the first with the third or the second with the third. I'm just going to take negative two times row two plus row three, and I'm going to put the answer in row three. Okay, so if we do that, I'm just going to copy down. I usually like to kind of write down the rows that haven't changed just to kind of get that out of the way. And so now this is the row that's going to be changing row three. So negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero negative six plus negative one is negative seven, negative two plus negative two is negative four, and uh, negative 36 plus negative three is negative 39. Okay, so you can see the numbers are getting large here. Okay, the next step, we wanna get zero right here where that one is. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine uh, the first equation with the second equation. So that's gonna be negative, uh, let's see, negative uh, four times row, two plus row one, answer goes in row two. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we've got, uh, let's see, a copy down this bottom row because that's not changing. Yeah, and again, be careful that you don't make uh, little simple mistakes because that's easy to do with this method. Okay, and so let's see, so we've got negative four times this row plus this row. So that's gonna give us zero. Negative 12 plus one is negative 11. Negative four plus negative one is negative five. Negative four is gonna give us negative 72, plus the 12 is negative 60. Okay, so now we've got zero in this uh, spot, this spot, now we wanna get zero over here where the negative seven is. And so the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna combine uh, the second row with the third row. Now, you might be thinking, well, why aren't you combining the first with the third? Well, if I combine the first with the third, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up getting a constant besides zero in this lower left-hand corner, which is gonna kind of reverse out what we you know, did earlier when we tried to get zero here. So that's why I'm just combining the second and the third, because you can see when you add zero and zero, that's just gonna still be zero, so it's not gonna get rid of this uh, zero in this place here. So let's go ahead and figure this one out. We're gonna have to, let's see, multiply seven times row two, right, um, plus a negative 11 times row three, and we're gonna put the answer in row three. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we've got four, we've got one, we've got negative one, we've got 12, right? And let's see, this one is gonna stay the same, so zero, negative 11, negative five, negative 60. Uh, this one is gonna be, let's see, seven times row two, that's negative 77, plus positive 77, that's zero. We've got uh, negative 35, okay, plus uh, 44, which is how much? That's nine, right? And then we've got, let's see, uh, here's where I'm gonna break out the calculator. We've got seven times row two, so that's gonna be a negative 420, right? 
plus uh, a negative 11 times negative 39, which gives us nine. Okay, so that worked out nice, okay, so there we go. So now you can see we've gotten zeros in that lower left-hand corner. The next step is to get ones on the diagonal, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna multiply uh, 1 9th times row three, I'm gonna put the answer in row three. I'm gonna multiply uh, row two times negative 1 11th, and I'm gonna put the answer in, of course, row two, and then row one, we're gonna multiply by 1 4th, and I'm gonna put the answer in row one. So I'm just multiplying through by the reciprocal of the leading coefficient for that row. So if I do that, let me switch over here now, Okay, we've got, on the bottom row, we've got 0, 0, 1, and 1, okay, and in the second row, we've got 0, 1, uh, let's see, 5 elevenths, and let's see, uh, this is going to give us 60 over 11, and then we've got 1, 1 fourth, uh, let's see, negative 1 fourth, and 3. Okay, so our equations now are going to be, let's see, we've got the top row, which is x plus 1 fourth y minus 1 fourth z is equal to 3. We've got 1y plus 5 elevenths z is equal to 60 elevenths, right? And then the last one, we can see that we have z equals 1. So we've already got z solved for, so that's good. Now we're going to do our back substitution. So if I put 1 in for z, that gives us y plus 5 elevenths is equal to 60 elevenths. Subtract the 5 elevenths, and that gives us y is equal to 55 elevenths, which is equal to 5. Okay, so we know what y is now. Now we just have to solve for x. So let's put those other values in. We've got x plus uh, 1 fourth times y, which is 5. Uh, let's see, plus a negative 1 fourth uh, z, which is 1, is equal to 3. So this gives us 5 fourths minus 4 fourths, which is negative 4 fourths, which is... I said that wrong, 5 fourths minus 1 fourth is 4 fourths, which is 1. So that's x plus 1 is equal to 3. If we subtract 1, we get x is equal to 2. And if we write our final answer as a triple, we've got x is 2, y is 5, and z is 1. And that's our answer. And again, if you want to check your, you know, to make sure you did it right, you can take these values, put them in for x, y, and z in all three equations, and, you know, verify that you've done it correctly. And that's exactly right. So this is how to do the Gaussian elimination with back substitution. I'm going to have another video where we do the Gauss-Jordan elimination with the row reduced echelon form. So if you're interested, uh, take a look at that video and uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. I look forward to helping you in the future videos and I'll talk to you soon.